Hey guys, I'm Marzalvain, and welcome back to another episode of The Longest Journey. Uh, new day, another episode. Um, we finally made it past the points that I attempted recording on. Uh, so this is actually my first time actually seeing this scene, so it's technically uh, pretty much blinded by this point again. Blind, blind playthrough again, back to this point. Um, so none of this is familiar to me anyways, so yeah, let's get into it. So we, Cortez basically introduced us to whatever this is that's going to be leading us to a new world maybe. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it, I guess. Oh, I almost forgot. What? When you're ready to come back, pay a visit to a friend of mine called Westhouse. Brian Westhouse. I'll for sure forget that name, but okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be transported somewhere else, I guess, because Cortez introduced us to it. But we also finally found our way through in the last episode to get to this point finally, so... Yeah. It's interesting to see this kind of old animation, though, because back then... Animation was, like, very, like... Low... I wouldn't say it's low quality, I just think it's just... The fact that there wasn't a lot of high capabilities of making crazy, like, animations. Was Cortez closing his eyes to help push us into the next world, into that world of his? <laughs> Oof. Fire con Dios, child, and may the balance protect you. Uh huh. Oh wow. Cortez. What the hell? Why is there a bunch of like bald? Bearded dudes with hoods. Cortez! I have a bad feeling about this. Well, he didn't follow through. He didn't follow Wait. us with him. So. What was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Ryan Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now. <laughs> You chose to go here, now you can't go back until you get to that guy. Uh, no, I didn't want to look at her. I wanted to look at the thing, but I guess it's not allowing me to. Can't see much, but it looks like there's a group of men trying to establish some kind of order, and then some guy trying to raise a pillar from the ground, maybe? Just looking at the murals is what I'm seeing. Uh, hello, priest guy? Hello? Hi. This is very awkward. Does he not speak hey, our language? Emilie Uh, uh, oh jeez. <laughs> I don't know. Do you speak English? Parlez-vous français? Habla espagnol? Paku, Starkayan Paras, Inomalante Candra, Ton Maris Oretheasi Ton. I have no clue what he's saying still. Where's Cortez? To Tone Eken, to Ken Vernilia Fata Tim Tu Vermilian Ton. So I'm guessing we're just gonna pretend like we know nothing, so. Yeah, I can't do anything for it. Oh, listen, okay. Aku Kandi. Good. Niranton Avoch. Sank Al Koda Magic. Torante. Salhe. Naven. All Tongue. Huh. So I'm guessing he's just saying something. I'm guessing he's just talking about like the world maybe because he thinks he knows that we don't we're not from the same world that he is in so of orta e beginning parasim tin you you have theesa e magic e sara e the knowledge aritua ya ai tue by generations e umani knowledge of all tongue oh so he's talking about how we have magic just as much as he does. 
and it's been passed down through generations and that's why uh, Cortez was able to probably talk about this all tongue language that's able to transport us here so that's probably what it is that he used to get us here all this time so all right now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart oh and the knowledge of all tongue ever present but dormant to guide your ears and your tongue ah so we just keep I, listening to him i understand you you speak english why didn't you just tell me straight away you can't <laughs> no child i do not speak english I speak Naven, all tongue, the common language of Arcadia. Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oof. Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. <laughs> Meaning what? Social intercourse is the way you said that. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grensret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. We are the fathers. Ah, uh, okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? Indeed. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. You are without guidance, without a mentor? Mm hmm. Mentor? There's this guy, Cortez. He assisted me, told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I don't. <laughs> Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come. Let us proceed. Let me show you Marcuria, the grandest city of all ages. Uh huh. You know what's just, what's actually interesting is that the the idea of like going into a different world kind of feeling. I feel like this story takes it into an interesting level where like the futuristic city thing is like the setting of our time, and we're just like going into an imagination to transport us elsewhere. And it's really interesting to see in this capacity. Because they said magic, but in the other world, there's no such things as magic, so... Hmm. Oh wow. Is that the whole part of the city? Explore like... Mercuria, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then. Oh, I couldn't see for, like, for the life of me, I was like, where is he speaking from? I'm barely able to see from this angle where I need to go. Okay, so that goes to the temple. I can't talk to individuals out here, can I? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's available. The whole fountain's been carved in one piece from a granite-like material. Very impressive. The stalls. Let's, yeah, let's look at the stalls. Wow, this is a very interesting location. You know what's really cool is the animation that they choose to do for like some of the transition pieces and stuff. In a world without the screen, that's what passes for entertainment, and it's pretty darn good. But I don't see her break dancing. I'm only seeing her hopping, doing the Irish dance, I guess, a little bit. What is it? Is it really the Irish dance? I can't remember if that's the case. My intuition tells me maps. <laughs> sells maps. <laughs> okay. That's a particularly sleazy-looking merchant. I wonder what he's selling. Probably he's no. He looks like he's making. Yeah, he's playing cup games. That's a particularly sleazy-looking. Okay, no, I just want to talk to the guy with the maps because he might give me a map. Maps, I, I got maps. Can I interest you in a map, miss? Top notch, hand drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. Uh, how much, how are, much your are your maps? 
Uh, that depends, miss. I got a very nice one here of the Border Mountains for only six Aaron's fresh from the quill of a Sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. Mm hmm. Do you sell maps of the city? Can't help you there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. Oh. I can tell you're not from around here, or you know that. <laughs> Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! This guy's very... Very, like, interested in selling his maps. <laughs> Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're closed for the holidays. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't even know if it's a holiday. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps! <laughs> Do you know Vestrum Tobias? Everyone knows Vestrum Tobias, girl. He's been an important part of this city for as long as I can remember. What can you tell me about him? The Vestrum is an honorable man, but a conservative one, and I don't know if he still has the best interests of the people at heart. Interesting. Sometimes I think he worries too much about custom. The Sentinel have been our so-called protectors and keepers of the balance for so long we don't even think of it anymore. But now that the Vanguard are introducing a new way of thinking, new philosophies, I'm afraid the Sentinel will find their power diminish before too long. Their resistance to change will be their downfall. Mark my words, their downfall for certain. And Tobias, honorable man that he is, will be remembered as the captain who went down with his ship. Interesting. Okay. I don't know who Tobias is. I, I might have forgotten names already because of... The, the the whole world is already being introduced to me and it's like hard to kind of gravitate towards everything it's like overwhelming a little bit but we'll see what's arcadia like what can i say about a whole world girl <laughs> it's, a world. it's a beautiful place for sure but we're stuck in the past we don't look ahead not like our cousins in stark Star. Magic is all well and good, but it won't bring our world into the modern age, and Arcadia is untamed. It's wild and unpredictable. Good for the map business, sure, but not so good for productivity and expansion. No, oh, some people may consider our world a paradise. The Sentinel, for one, they'd prefer to keep it just the way it is. Me, I'd like to see some changes, and fast. Hmm. Yeah, so some so they're just saying that the reason why they're stuck like this is because and technology isn't involving is because magic is there. But it's true, because if you have magic in life, there's no such thing as needing better technology for the most part. Like because magic is providing a lot of that sort of advancement for things. The only thing people would want to further is pushing that boundary of uh, magic to go further and further because they want to make sure that they can uh, get as much as they can through the magic that they have, so yeah, I guess that's the point of what I see. How do you get along with your neighbors? The cup's handler? Stay away from him, miss. He takes great joy in robbing people's purses. You can't beat him, not without magic. And he doesn't allow magic at his table. Oof. <laughs> How would he know if I did use magic? Oh, he's got one of those blasted talismans. They're always digging up magical artifacts in Chagagriel, and they sell them to dogs like him for a silver coin or two. Get a proper job, you son of a mole! <laughs> he's yelling at he's yelling at him from afar. That's hilarious. What do you know about Stark? Land of wonders, strange customs, and machinery. Ah, to be in Stark. Oh, are we from Stark, I'm I guessing? I get my right leg. Well, perhaps not my right leg as such. You really need two sturdy legs to stand on in this business, or you'll find yourself... Um, uh, yes, uh, a grand place indeed, <laughs> free of this blasted, chaotic, unpredictable magic. It does no good to anyone. Now, machines built by man, controlled by man, in servitude of man. That's the future, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, the Vanguard sure. may be a little unorthodox in their methods and teachings, but they're right about one thing. Stark and Arcadia belong together, not apart. Interesting. Thanks for your help. Maps! 
All right, cool. I don't think I can ask any more. Mind if questions? I ask you a couple of questions? <clears throat> yes, maps. Thanks for your help. <laughs> maps. <laughs> it just goes back to the. No maps for me today. Thanks. <clears throat> Fair enough, miss, but don't expect me to come running to your aid if you ever get lost in Riverwood. Without my maps, you'll probably end up a mole's dinner or worse. Maps? Maps? <laughs> Just the maps. Alright, where's my mouse cursor? Damn it. There it is. I was like, where's my map? My mouse cursor? Damn it. Uh, I'm not gonna deal with this guy just yet, but I, I'm just worried that if I do what mess with this sorry guy. looking bird. Hey, you don't look too polished yourself, lady. Oops, I didn't know you could talk. Didn't look as if you could talk either. Oof, okay. Well, back to the marketplace. Um, so that's it for that part. I want to see what other things we nice can... Nice fountain. I want to see what other things we can kind of approach it at. City. City. Yeah, let's go to the city. Let's check out the city some more and stuff like that. I'm not gonna talk to the the dude who's like, oh wow, this is a whole <laughs> map of itself. City gates, I guess. Where am I? Oh, I'm right here. Okay, I didn't see myself. Those guys must be part of the city watch. They look a hell of a lot more intimidating than the Newport cops, despite the lack of an exoskeleton. Makes sense. Those guys must be part of the city. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> All right, let's see what this stall has to offer. <clears throat> this Excuse guy's me. selling musical instruments. Most of these I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there and what looks like half a guitar and a couple of dried rabbit carcasses. Ugh. Oh yeah, because those Is he actually playing an actual thing? I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular moment. Still, good to know where to get one in case of a musical emergency. Okay. Fair, fair. Stout guardians of the city. Wooden, but stout. And that blue fire is way cool. This lady's fish? selling fresh fish. I've never seen fish like this before. But if it's wet and has fins, fish it is. Alright. I'm gonna walk over here to see if there's any... Like, it looks like it expands a bit This more. guy's selling lobsters, crabs, eels, and... What the hell is that purple thing? That is so not appetizing. Purple thing? Can you describe it? He's selling a variety of fresh shellfish and other, uh, delicacies. <laughs> other, uh, delicacies. You know what's cool about this area is just, like, the backs, the, the background landscape is really interesting. The size of these galleons is truly breathtaking. And there are dozens of dozens of them, not to mention a number of smaller vessels. Mercury must be a very important and very busy port. I mean, considering how much there is. Considering how much, like, stuff there is to see, it's just very overwhelming <laughs> to me now at this point. I can't talk to these folks, I guess. Blue fire. It's either propane or magic. I'm guessing the latter. Magic indeed. Alright, there's a lot of things. Yeah, I can't go anywhere past those areas, so... Maybe we, we, we can go to the lighthouse, maybe? Wow, we we're going pretty far. Okay, there we go. Assorted cargo. Uh, Judging by his ungainly stance, I'd say he's a mariner pining for the sea. Let's talk to the dude, see what information he's got, because we don't know much about the world outside of the town itself, or the city Ahoy itself. Ahoy there, matey! Pardon? <laughs> Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? No. No. <laughs> What do you say, then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today, then, if we're feeling adventurous. <laughs> but never, ever, ahoy. Ahoy. This is valuable information. So these sailors... I matey, that it be. Oh, come on. He just said the pirate language right there. He just... He said there's no ahoy, but there is the I, matey. It's like, what is going on? Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? No. Yes? Is it flapping? No. What? Is it flapping? Is the sail flapping 
in the wind. Um, no. <laughs> and why is that then? There's no wind. Because, because it's not windy? Exactly. So that means that they well, can't, can't sail. Can't you just use oars or something? Hell no. Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't we think of that? Of course, oars by Jaws stunted left arm. That's it. <laughs> why have we been moored to the dock for a month with our merchandise dropping <clears throat> in value when we could have just rowed our way to Guillen? Are you being sarcastic? Yes. Sarcastic? Me? What in Jaws' name makes you think that? Uh, this guy's really okay. I'm gonna take a stop in his sarcastic conversation to kind of end this episode for now because I think we've explored enough of the city for now to 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 get to a point where we understand a little bit more. I want to try to get this. Thanks for the chat. I. I. <laughs> but I want to get this into the next episode because I want to. Uh, I have other things to get back to after this one's recording but yes other than that thank you guys for watching uh, it's been 20 minutes uh and i did say i wanted to leave these episodes to be more 20 minutes than 30 minutes than usual um because i want to make sure that i have enough time to uh not only just edit these videos but just kind of keeping it short because i feel like uh these episodes would go slower in the sense that it takes a bit more like I don't know, I just feel like I want to keep these this particular series shorter because I think I promised myself in my head that I wanted it to, to be not beyond 30 minutes, but at least under 30 minutes. Uh, and I'm probably keeping to that unless I struggle with something like that takes a long time to kind of get through and it's tedious enough to a point where I want to make an episode beyond 30 minutes because of that, then that would do that. But otherwise, it's just there's a lot more exploring to this that just seems to be very slow built, built out, slowly built out. Um, and I want to take my time at it, so I want to make sure that's the case with that. Um, plus, we need to save on a new save. Cool. All right. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next episode or nobody minds. Hope you guys have a great, amazing day. We can to one of watching this. I think there's a lot we just got through just now. A lot of conversations, a lot of new information, and a new world to explore. And it seems like this world wants to combine itself with the futuristic world that we just came from at the beginning of the game. So it's interesting to see how both worlds play differently towards each other but i don't know what goal we ultimately have besides finding brian westwood i think his name is and also talking to that priest to see if he knows where he's at and also try to figure out the world better through the through the the, the mouths of these people including that sailor that we just talked to who was super sarcastic on us i'm pretty sure he's going to become more sarcastic as we keep talking to him because he just feels like it's better that way for him because he wants to avoid that conversation in any capacity Anyways, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one, where nobody minds. And uh, we'll keep going with the longest journey uh, as slowly as possible, sadly enough. But I, I mean, I don't want to quicken this because it's no point in quickening this one because I feel like this one takes a bit more slow pace for me, uh, personally. Um, but it, I might take another like long break before I get to the next episode, but we'll see. Uh, if, I, if I don't start up a new series, um, I won't probably head back to this uh for a little bit but it might be shared between the other game and this game in general so it'll it'll depend on what uh series i end up starting up and that will probably take the time of whatever recording of this so yeah otherwise that's it for this episode so roz <laughs>